brief itself is actually quite intensive. It goes into a lot more detail. This is kind of an overview, but it'll give you an idea of most of the items that are mentioned on the actual training courses. Okay, so the ultimate aim here is to give you guys a confidence to escape from a ditch or a ditching aircraft using the equipment provided. Okay. First of all, equipment-wise, we're going to talk about an EBS. EBS is an emergency breathing system. Okay? And I mentioned, I think, to some of you downstairs earlier, when you saw the guys using it, is the reason why it came about. Um, over many years, they did a lot of accident analysis. They looked into fatalities okay, in the actual offshore industry, uh, helicopter incidents. And they found that one of the biggest factors of potentially survivable incidents was cold water shock. Okay, that led to fatalities. All right? Same thing with the Titanic. All people think people drowned, they didn't. It was cold shock that actually got them. Okay? So initial immersion into water. Okay? So for that reason, they provided, they designed a system. This is the latest incarnation for the UK sector, okay, and other, some other parts of the world. All right? uh, emergency breathing systems do differ in different regions sometimes. Okay? This is not a compressed air system. This is basically the user will utilize their own air. Okay. There is a small compressed air cylinder attached inside the jacket, inside the breathing bladder, and that's designed to go on, sorry, to activate on contact with water. Okay. That, although it's compressed air, it actually fills the jacket to an ambient pressure, so it doesn't have any implications to breathing from that particular unit. Okay. Um, although it's putting air into the jacket, you will still be able to make an escape underwater wearing this jacket out of one of the escape exits. Okay? You will be slightly more buoyant, but that's all covered in the training okay, as to how you overcome that. Okay? So, this is a combined unit. It's a life jacket with an emergency breathing system built into it. Okay? How to put it on if you're going to wear it today? Hold it easily in your right hand, like so. Take your left hand. Pass it through the two straps at the back, put your head right through the middle, okay? And that's it. Now these are training jackets. Being training jackets, they are not fitted with that compressed air cylinder. So today, the only air that you will have in the system is the air that you put in, okay? <laughs> All right? So it's important that you follow instructions, okay? Don't put a breath in, you've got nothing to breathe, okay? Simple as that. Okay. Simple logic. Yeah. Tell you as it is. <laughs> okay. All I'm doing here is just trying to secure it around the back so it doesn't slide open. Okay. So its first clip is this one on the side. Metal clip goes to metal. Okay. <laughs> then you have a crotch strap. And the idea behind this is to stop the whole thing riding up when you go into the water. Okay. So first of all, undo the Velcro on the strap, extend it fully, and then you pass it between your legs. Okay. Plastic clip goes to plastic clip. There it is. Tighten it up and any loose ends roll it away. Basically with helicopter travel, going on board a confined area, okay, where you've got harnesses and everything, you do not want any unnecessary loose articles, okay, that could cause entrapment. So tuck everything away. So there's the jacket on. Now if you are traveling offshore, there are inspection panels. So when these are handed out, this is a standard area where you'd find an inspection panel with a maintenance record. Some companies actually put it on the outer side here. This would normally be rolled in here, but as it's been used in class already, it's just unraveled itself slightly. Okay. Training jackets, the Velcro isn't actually that strong. So in the water today, they will start to open a wee bit once they get a bit wet. Okay. Here we have the life jacket toggle. Okay. That's the inflation for the life jacket part, which goes up around the sides here and behind your head, okay? Other features you have, which you won't find on the training one, but would be on the offshore version, is this. This is a spray, spray visor. Once you're outside the helicopter, have a major escape. If you're on the surface of the water, you want to protect your airway from any splashes, wave breaking over, anything like that, then you don't need spray it, okay? And that's it, okay, like so. And you can breathe underneath it, but it prevents water getting into the airway. This is purely would be attached inside the jacket and that is salt water activated and that's your little emergency light that flashes away. Okay? There's also a light on the jacket itself when it opens up. Okay? So these are added little features. Right? So they're not going to be on your jacket today because when you get in the water, these have a habit of falling out. 
They are on a breakable lanyard, but it takes a bit of tension to actually remove it. Okay, so for that reason, you won't have one today. Right. Now, the EBS itself, the breathing system. These are used where you have time. So in the event of a ditching, if you have prior warning, okay, helicopter comes into the water, slowly submerging, you have time, then you would deploy the system and you would activate it ideally just above the water. So when you do end up underwater, then you have the full breath benefit, the breath you put in and also the charge that's inside the unit. Okay? And it's there purely to control your breathing, to give you time to push out your exits and make an escape. Okay? So, today I'll give you instruction when to deploy it, when to use it. In a real situation, the pilots, the air crew, do not give any information on this. They may give control and information and direction regarding exiting an aircraft, trying to control an actual ditching, okay, a controlled ditching. But for this, they will not tell you when to use it. That's purely up to an individual's choice. Okay? So, today I'm going to tell you. So there you go, that's a, that's a bonus for you. How to deploy it. When you come into contact with the water, first thing you want to do is locate. Hand onto your exit, other hand onto your buckle. Okay? And then you weigh up what the situation is doing. If you were to go rapidly underwater, then your only option is <gasps> take a big breath. That's all you can do. But today we're going to do it so you have time. Okay? So you'd locate first, weigh up the situation, assess it, then I will inform you to deploy your EBS. Always keep your exit hand fixed on your exit. That's your only reference to make an escape, okay? So the hand on the exit stays locked on that exit. Take the other hand, your buckle hand, reach up to your chin, find a little tag here. This tag on top of the EBS unit. Rip the bag open, like so, okay? Now, in reality, there will also be stitches, okay? There are little loops, okay, on the jacket. You just about make one out there, okay? And in these loops, there are little cotton stitches. So you're not just pulling Velcro, you're also busting stitches as well. So it needs to be a tuck, okay? What falls out is this. Breathing hose, valve assembly, mouthpiece, little red button there, which is an activation toggle, and a set of nose clips to block off this airway, okay? So that encourages you to breathe purely through your mouth, all right? For those that have scuba dives or use a snorkel, it's the same mouthpiece. For those that have never used that, okay, how you put this in your mouth, your teeth rest in the little lugs here, okay? So your teeth are inside this area, okay? Top and bottom. Your lips go right over the outside. And the best way to think about it is imagine you're breathing through a tube, okay? Seal your lips around it and breathe through the center. Don't breathe around it, eyes in like that. Because if you grimace too much or you bite your teeth too hard into this, it tightens the corner of your lips and you won't only just suck in air, but you'll suck in water as well. Okay? So a good seal is important. All right? Try, easier said than done, try and remain as relaxed as you can with your jaw. All right? Okay? Needless to say, before you do anything underwater, you'll have plenty of practice with this prior to that. Okay? So you deploy it. You put your mouthpiece in your mouth, you put your nose clips on. One important thing is make sure, before you put it in your mouth, that there's a little silver button here, is in as far as it goes into the body, okay? The reason for that, with the silver pin in here, it means that when you put this in your mouth, you're gonna breathe through your mouth, out through the side here. That's where the air passage goes. If the pin is like that, out, you're only breathing purely off the contents of the system, okay? So make sure, prior to putting your mouth, that that pin actually is in, all the way. It will be, but check, okay? Then, mouthpiece in, nose clips on, this hand, back to buckle, the other hand is on your exit, okay? So, you're sitting there, breathing normal air from the cabin through the side valve. You're not gonna be able to make a normal evacuation or an escape just above the water, you are now submerging fairly quickly, but you still have time. So the next stage is, you need to activate, okay? So you would take your buckle hand, okay? You then reach up to locate this little red stopper between your thumb and forefinger ideally, okay? Or you can grip with your fingertips here, depending on how you find it, yeah? 
locate the next stage and this is the important part take in as big a breath as you can manage okay so you breathe in hold that breath as you hold your breath squeeze when you hear it go click breathe out what you'll see is the bag will start to inflate around you the breathing bladder that you're breathing from is not just in here it starts here goes all the way up the side of the jacket, around the back of your head, and it comes down this side. It's horseshoe shaped, okay? Big volume in it. So now you're breathing your own air. Once you've done that, hand is back to buckle, your other hand's on your exit. When the water level comes up to eye level and above, what do you start to do then? Breathe. Count. You're breathing from this, and you are counting. How long do you count for, do you know? Seven. The magic seven seconds. Why seven seconds? because rotors could still be turning. Helicopter generally within a seven second period of submersion, it'll be, its aspect will be decided whether it's gonna to start to capsize or it's gonna remain in an upright position. So you always give it around seven seconds before you think about escaping. Now, seven seconds feels like an eternity, okay? It really does, right? Okay? It's a long seven seconds of your life, okay? Especially where you desperately want to get out of there. But you have to stay controlled if you can. Yeah? When it comes to our escapes today, do your own count. Alright? That's my best advice for you. Don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and just before you go, you notice that the person opposite is still sitting there. You think, okay, I may be a bit quick. I should recount. One, two, and then he starts that. And the person opposite you, through the water, the kind of blood, see the shape there. Oh, they haven't gone yet. I'll wait till they go. Yeah? I'm sure they want. We'll just go and through. That's what we do. <laughs> often you see. Me. We'll see people watching each other, squinting, <laughs> looking at the window like this, and thinking they're not going yet. And that's it. And the next thing is they start to get stressed, a little bit panicky, and then they shoot out the window. Do your own count. When you get to what you feel is seven seconds, make your escape. If you go too quick, I'll tell you, okay? If you're not getting your hair wet, I'll tell you, okay? Because the idea is an underwater escape, all right? <laughs> okay. But remember that today is an experience. It's not about having to do it and fulfill a set standard, okay? It's to give you an experience, all right? So we're quite easy on you. And we're quite easy on delegates anyway, because the last thing we want to do is increase stress, okay? Fair enough for that so far. So you've activated it. Head goes underwater, start your count to seven seconds. After seven seconds, the next thing you do is, now you guys are going to be working today with open exits, okay? If you had a window in place, an emergency exit in place, the first thing you would do after seven seconds is jettison that emergency exit. So if it's not out, then you need to get rid of it, okay? Only when that exit is jettisoned would you then think about releasing your seatbelt harness and then make an escape. The seatbelt harness is always the last thing to be removed. Why? Because if you undo it and you haven't got your exit out, you're now floating up into the roof area of the, of the helicopter and you are not going to be able to get your exit out because you're just going to be bouncing off everything. Okay? So you always make sure you are fully restrained, make sure your exit's fully clear, your hand is on the outside of the aircraft, getting a good hold, then you release your buckle. As soon as you release your buckle, you'll start to go up, okay? But because your hand is fixed on your exit, you go horizontal, and you will make an actual good escape out of that aircraft. Okay? That's the idea. Clear enough on that, guys? Any questions on this? If you want the technicalities of it, the one big breath that you put into the bag, they say theoretically, Regardless of age or physique, you should get at least 30 seconds worth of air to rebreathe in a shallow ditch in just beneath the surface of the water. Okay? You should get around 30 seconds out of that one breath. Okay? The gas charge that's in there, which is just purely compressed air, 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, that's it. Okay? Just similar to what we breathe naturally. That should give you a minimum of around 45 seconds worth of it. So in theory, it says 1 minute and 15. You're not going to spend 1 minute and 15 seconds under there, okay? All right? You basically, the idea behind it is to give you that tidal volume, all right? So when you gasp <coughs> and go like that with the cold water, you have a tidal volume that will actually prevent you from suddenly having a restriction of air and panicking. That's the idea, okay? That's it. So 
can, can something be done like if you because I've actually had the experience